Hey there, everybody. Hope everything's great on your end. And again, as always, thanks so much for taking the time to watch our video. I always make it a point to share something that will hopefully help you in your own spiritual warfare, and I really do hope that you'll learn a lot by the end of this video. I'd like to start off with what Father Donald Calloway said during an interview. We've got to look at the fruit to know what spirit is behind what sometimes can appear to be one thing, but it isn't because this often happens in certain cultures where they hear somebody say, well, I'm a Catholic, so they just think he meant what he said. The easiest example would have to be Joe Biden, who kept on saying that he's a devout Catholic and yet in support of abortion. I tell you what, I don't want to get in a debate with you on theology, but you're not, well, anyway. I'm not going to make a, I'm not going to make a judgment for other people. And I love what Father Calloway said here during the interview. And that's why I love, by the way, guys like uh, Eduardo Verastegui, you know, the, the Mexican actor guy, because he basically tells people, look, guys, don't be duped by just thinking that somebody who just has an image of Our Lady of Guadalupe is it about Catholic? Even the astrologists on, you know, Mexican TV have an image of Our Lady of Guadalupe. Don't be duped by thinking, you know, that these people are on the side of Christ. They're not. They're deceiving you. So you've got to look at the fruit. You've got to look at the fruit to know what spirit is behind what sometimes can appear to be one thing, but it isn't. Mm. But it isn't. So now back to the compilation. We'll kick this off with Father Chad Ripperger then, because I always love listening to his lectures and interviews. Did you know there's a demon known as demons of the air? And basically what they are, these demons of the air are the demons that can get into the air through various sins that people commit and they can influence things within our home. Remember how many, it's like in the 20s, there's like 20 references to demons of the air throughout the totality of scripture in various locations. I might be wrong in that statistic, but there's definitely rec uh, references to that. And so the, the candle, as it's blessed in the old rite, is actually asks, and prayer begets what it signifies. So what you ask for is what you get. So when you pray this in relationship with the candle, and uh, the priest does, and it, it receives that blessing, it's actually you're asking to drive the demons out of the area by the light of the candle. Mm -hmm. And just to point this out, if any of you want to check out the full video of any clips shared here, I've provided all the links in the description box below. As for the next highlight, there isn't any video interview about this, so I'm just going to share with you what I read instead, which is also the title of this video. It's about what Monsignor Stephen Rossetti experienced during one particular exorcism. So it goes like this where a man once called Monsignor Rossetti and said his house was infested with demons. The man added that the demons attacked him in bed and choked him. So the man instinctively said in a loud voice, in the name of Jesus, get off me. And he said this several times until the demons finally stopped. Interesting enough, Monsignor Rossetti also said that many people who are attacked by demons often say that they are sometimes choked by them. So it's not really a unique incident. Monsignor Rossetti shared in his writings during the worst case he had, the demon said through the mouth of the possessed person, they are forced to choke this person because of what the exorcism team was doing to them. But the real question is, why do demons choke people? Here's what Monsignor Rossetti has to say about it. Firstly, it is something animals do. They grab their prey by the throat to subdue it and to kill it, but we know that demons are not allowed to kill people. However, they can choke people in certain limited circumstances, especially the possessed. Demons act like vicious beasts and are often portrayed as animals, so they choke people to try to establish their authority over the person and also to frighten and intimidate them. But be rest assured, God does not allow the demons to kill us and Monsignor Rossetti even said that the proper response is what the man spontaneously did which is to command the demons in Jesus' name to stop because we all have authority over our own bodies and we can exercise this authority by telling the demons to leave. Demons try to establish their control through intimidation and fear. Now for the next highlight in this compilation, it's a short one of Father Ripperger, but I feel like it's a great addition here as a reminder and something we can learn together, which is Father Ripperger's recommendation regarding what we should do before moving into a new home. When you move into a new home as a general recommendation, as a general rule, I always exercise the place because you never know, even if it's a new house, what the construction people have done. I have a relative who moved into a brand new house 
and the people in the construction had done stuff there. And so we're still cleaning up that house spiritually. Wow. So exercising it and then having the priest bless it when you first move in. And as for the next highlight, this is something I've shared in other videos. I feel it's something worth repeating. And according to Father Ripperger, when we commit a sin, we are in a certain sense taking ourselves out from underneath God's authority and placing ourselves under the authority of Satan. And also when we are committing the sin, we are aligning or leading ourselves with Satan because by sinning there is a certain binding that we are doing. When we commit a sin, we bind ourselves to the agent of sin which is Satan to his kingdom. And through that, and so whereas the absolution actually, it, it absolves, it literally removes the bond of the sin in relationship to the individual and the demon who has got his foot in the door through the sin, once that bond is broken, a lot of times that'll even cause uh, causes cases of possession to break, um, a lot of uh, obsession, but oppression, you see that quite a bit. Once people finally confess the sins and things like that, a lot of that stuff just clears up. Did you know that the church is always referred to on earth as the church militant? But it appears for people to understand spiritual combat, spiritual warfare, and so forth. It's intimidating for a lot of people. Why do you think we are in this place now where we don't even hear this conversation about spiritual combat, spiritual warfare very much at all? And yet there are so many people who are clearly starving for this, ultimately because it's written on our hearts that we are to engage in this spiritual battle. I think you'll find the answer to this question rather interesting as it is all down to one of the fruits of modernism. I almost hate to use this word because, quote a movie, you keep using that word, I do not think it means what you think it means. Um, but I think it's one of the fruits of modernism. Mm. Um, and, and in modernism, basically, when it comes to the scriptures, you treat it as a type of mythology, um, that it's all symbols, it's not real, per se. And what has happened in that time span, not just in the Catholic Church, but in most churches as well, is we have turned Jesus into a nice guy and the devil into a, a, a mythical typology. Right. And that he's not real. And I can't remember who said it, and I wish I could. I keep attributing to C.S. Lewis, and that's wrong, that the greatest hoax the devil ever pulled was convincing people he didn't exist. Let's just remember this. One of the things that history shows us is that Satan always overplays his hand. He plays really subtle, and he plays with masks. He plays behind the scenes for a long time, but he hates being behind the scenes because he's a proud spirit. He likes to be upfront because likes to receive the worship and the adoration and so eventually he overplays his hand and he comes out in the open and he pushes things too far. If you take Hitler as an example, Hitler when he first came to power, the Nazis first came to power, were very subtle in their approach. They were bringing in things, people said Hitler's great, we have full employment, um, you know, the economy's doing well, uh, he's in favor of... Uh, good families, good marriages. He's supporting all of these things that we really like. A lot of conservative people were in favor of what he was doing. Um, and then, of course, the mask came down and never people, be, people began to see what he was really like and what he really stood for. And that's when the people who were believers were able to roll up their sleeves and say, right, we have to do something about this. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a good lesson from history, that the devil overplays his hand. And very often, if the people of faith um, just bide their time, he will eventually show his true colors, um, and and that's when people of goodwill and, and faith will rise up and, and uh, stand for what's true and what's good. Well, that is all for this video, and we're truly sorry for taking too much of your time. But we do hope that you've learned something, and thank you so much for watching and listening. If you have any story you'd like to share on this channel in regards to your spiritual warfare, or your encounter with Christ during your difficult times, or even your battle with the devil, and you don't mind sharing your story with the public, you can send your video of you telling your story to our email. We can only pay between $50 to $100 per video for now, but if that's okay for you, we'd be more than honored to share your story with the world. It doesn't have to be long, just between 3 to 5 minutes long. Anyway, that is all for now, and again, thanks so much for watching, and God bless you.